Yeah, I've come to realize that my intros are not funny. How did you get it in there? Anywho, I haven't made a video comparing any of the handhelds in an extremely long time. And while we were talking about the PS3, the Xbox 360, and the Wii, that seemed like the perfect time to do this. So of course, as most of you should probably already figure out, I am a late 90s, early 2000s kid, so I've seen so many DSs. For the most part, it was uh, sort of like a fidget spinner, like they were literally everywhere. And for the most part, everyone had one. For some odd reason, I don't know if it's just a regional thing, I actually didn't really start to see, like, PSPs until I was in middle school. Which was fairly odd because the PSP was like seven years old at that time. I don't know where those people have been. I think one of the two reasons is because DS's were probably purchased more for little kids, even though adults do use them and there's nothing wrong with being an adult with a DS. Sometimes I pull out that thing and play it. <laughs> and of course I do know people that were also young that had PSPs. I just didn't know them when I was a little kid. But it also can be because of the sales. The PSP sold 82 million units, while the DS sold 150 million. So, with that being said, shall we begin? After the release of the Game Boy Advance, Nintendo began realizing that their ideas were sort of becoming stale, and I think the biggest question that they all asked was, where do we go from here? And we got that answer at E3 2004, when the DS was revealed. In the biggest wave of irony, Nintendo actually believed that the DS would be less successful than the GameCube or the Game Boy. Ironically, it was more successful than both. And over the years of success, Nintendo began to upgrade their models. For Sony, I assume that they created the PSP because now that they had control over the console market, they now wanted to take over the portable console market. And at E3 2004, the PSP was revealed. The PSP also had some evolution of models, and yeah, it also had a good life. The PSP had a lot of things that probably shocked a lot of people in 2004. But hey, it's Japan. They... they work their magic there. The software in the PSP probably looks familiar. Yep, I have to say I do like that it has the PS3 type of software. It's minimalistic, it looks good. I think that this was a good choice that Sony made. Other than talking about how the software looks like. Shockingly, you can do basically everything you can do on a PlayStation. It, it literally is a portable PlayStation. It has PSN, it has movies, it has the PS Store. The PSP also had expandable storage, something that the first DS did not have. I'm pretty sure it's obvious to say that the DS is not as complex as the PSP, but it still does have some pretty cool features. Like for example, DS Download Play, which allows you to play with other people who are next to you. This doesn't use Wi-Fi, it's own like wireless, I guess you can say LAN, type of network, where it connects all the DS's together. This is something that's done on the Switch. So wherever you are, whether you're in the car, anywhere, you can all play together. And also with PictoChat, you can do the same thing. Back in the day in the 2000s, there were barely any schools that had Wi-Fi. So using PictoChat, talking in class was basically our only solution to talk to, you know, other people in the same classroom. I, I, I mean, you, you could text on, on a flip phone. Having a phone back then... It, it was a little bit common, but, um, things are not- Yeah, things were not the same like they are now. And the DS had backwards compatibility for Game Boy games. Of course, the PSP has backwards compatibility for PS1 games and PS2 games, but because there was no Sony handheld before, uh, I, I didn't really feel like that would be fair to compare. The DS also had a touchscreen, which was fairly new for the time, even though about a decade ago, the Gamecom was a thing, you know? thing that had a touch screen with a stylus. God forbid if I ever have to talk about that. Every time I get to this segment of the video, I always know one comment that will probably come up. Why didn't you show this game? It, like, you can't play this without playing this game. If I was able to mention every single game for, like, all of these portable consoles, I might as well just say every single game on the DS and PSP is good. But I'm just picking ones that I would enjoy personally. So how could we not mention any first-party games for the DS? It's... It's pretty obvious at this point. Yes, Mario Kart, New Super Mario Bros, Super Mario 64. I mean, y you can't, like, leave them out of this. And also, yeah, y you guys get that. All, all the first party games. For the most part, they're amazing. I always thought Nintendogs was a more girl thing, so I've never really played that. And back in the day, 
Um, that was that was a pretty big deal. That 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 was a virtual pet. And to try and sell it to guys, uh, sort of. They had a guy just um, showing that he can get some uh, some pussy uh, with with the game, because that happens. Nintendo dogs are off the hook. I connect with other dog owners and train my own dog with my voice and touch. Honey, the girls are here. I know, Mom. Can I have a pussy, please? There's probably one that a lot of you are gonna like raise your eyebrows and be like, what the fuck is this? And it's a game called Time Ace, and it's actually pretty interesting. It's a flying shooter that I was very addicted to play as a kid, and you're just going through time killing enemies in a uh, spacecraft or a plane. I mean, I don't know, It like, when I talk about it, it sounds really stupid, but, but playing it is, uh, it's fun. There's also Transformers, and I never thought I would be saying this, but... This Transformers game is, uh, pretty fun. It's an open world game, so you can roam around and stuff. And it sort of reminds me of a, uh, child's GTA. Even though, as you can see, I have the Autobot version because there actually were two versions, so, uh, you can actually sort of be a Decepticon by killing, uh, just random pedestrians and cars and killing police as they attack you. You know, the stars go up. It's, it's, it's a little bit like GTA. You have your meter to show, like, how intense the, the cops will get and stuff. There was also a game that I liked called Speed Racer. Does anyone remember that? The movie that's probably gonna end up on the Nostalgia Critic eventually. But yeah, I don't know why, I just, uh, I like the game. For the most part, it's a faster version of Mario Kart. Except that you can do some certain stunts to, uh, build up speed to boost. And also you can unlock certain cars and colors and all that good stuff. For PSP, I like playing Star Wars Battlefront. This is really one of the games that really shows me that I do feel like I'm playing on a portable PlayStation. The frames are always smooth, it looks really good, and yeah, I'm just very impressed. There's also a sort of spin-off of Call of Duty 3, and this is called Call of Duty Roads to Victory. This one is no-brainer, but GTA Liberty City Stories, Vice City, and San Andreas. You can't go wrong with that. I'm not really sure about Chinatown Wars, I, I really wasn't a fan of uh, a bird's eye view GTA. And there's this game that's called Ridge Racers. And if you've never seen this game before, or even if you have seen this game before, uh, look at how beautiful those graphics are. Yeah, this is also that game that sort of brings me into the feeling of, uh, this is like a portable PS3. Clearly, it, it doesn't have, like, every single game, like, Fallout, or like GTA 4, or, like, clearly any of those other high-performing games. But games like Ridge Racer, and Battlefront, and even the older GTAs, really give it, like, a sense of, this is a portable... PlayStation. It's not just a separate portable device. It sort of has that like Nintendo Switch vibe just without the uh, connection to the TV. Oh, wait, never mind. I mean, clearly, I can't say that this is better than the Switch. Clearly, has like better specs by now. But this like really did have the Switch vibe. I have not played Daxter that much, but from what I've heard from people like Metal Jesus, this is something that many friends and YouTubers recommend. For the fans of Jack and Daxter that, uh, somehow, magically have never heard of, uh, Daxter on the PSP, this is actually a prequel and takes place in, in, like, the few final months, uh, in the two-year gap. Just like anything on planet Earth, even though the PSP is a shockingly amazing console, especially for the time, there are some drawbacks. At least, just in my personal opinion. As everyone knows, opinion means, uh, someone's, like, personal idea. Like, this is not facts, this is just an opinion. I I'm just saying this because people really get mad at other people when they express their opinions. Yeah, that that's sort of how the world works. And sometimes opinions can be a good thing. They can help to improve something. So my problem with the PSP, first off, is something that I've seen way too many times on eBay. Dead battery. For whatever reason, um, the battery is not really the best on the PSP. Not in terms of, like, the battery life, but just the battery itself. It, it has a pretty short lifespan, if it's not already obvious. Also, speaking of the battery, the battery door on some PSPs has been known to, uh, break. Just like... <laughs> just like here. Thankfully, they fixed all that nonsense with the PS Vita, but that's another video. Other than that, a very tiny minor complaint that I have to say 
is why 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 umd why well why couldn't it just be like you know cartridge it's smaller and uh it loads games faster thank god the ps vita fixed that as well uh and also i'm not sure why but every time a game loads i just cringe and if you've never owned a psp or you've never heard anyone play a psp usually you'll hear this sound effect uh that's because of the the umd <laughs> Yeah, I mean, nowadays, if you brought that to a very quiet place, maybe maybe you have one of those schools where if you finish your test, you, you can do something quiet. So you bring out your PSP, <laughs> and when you load a game, you hear the sound of a mouse dying. Clearly, it's not, like, that big of an issue that makes it unplayable. But it's, uh, it's sort of awkward when you're loading a game. It's not terrible, but just, hmm, yeah. Now on to the DS, which also has a lot of, uh for parts slash not working on ebay and that's mostly for the design this is also partially the reason that there's a ds light and more variations uh the clamshell design after a while didn't really work out with some users nintendo said that it was very important that the ds could survive a five foot drop ten times in a row but one thing that they weren't able to test which is understandable in a way is that the clamshell design would eventually just like break. This is sort of fixed with the DS Lite and uh, DSi and DSi XL, but I have seen it still happen, just less. And honestly, there actually is a pretty big difference when I open the original DS compared to like the 3DS or the DS Lite. I, I just feel like I could literally just rip off the screen of the original DS. Also, here's a minor complaint. At a certain angle, you're not really able to see the screen. It's uh, pretty hard to explain. I can't see the screen at all unless I'm facing it. And I know that some people are gonna say, well, why does that matter? Well, I, I really feel bad for people that are trying to like hurdle around to watch someone play. I know that seems really hard to imagine now, like who would do that, but that's actually something that did happen for smartphones. Also, what I said earlier about the DS Lite and how the design was changed and that's it, I take that back. The DS Lite actually fixed this uh, brightness issue. So yeah, that was the DS and PSP. These two companies introduced some pretty cool things. The PSP seems to be a little bit more powerful than the DS and has more features than the DS and has a great library of games. Although it did use those tiny discs, the games still looked amazing. And if you wanted to download games, you would have to have an SD card that um, was owned by Sony because you're not using a micro SD card for this thing, and you're not using a normal SD card for this thing. You're actually using an SD card that Sony made. Even though the DS was lacking the downloadability for the first model, it still had a great library of games, local multiplayer, and local chatting, which nowadays seems extremely useless, but back then, it was actually pretty fun. I think the big reason that it really caught people's attention was just that it had two screens. And that was something that was totally unheard of and sounded insane. But yeah, it still sold. Needless to say, whether we're talking about hardware or software, these two were totally ahead of their time. So yeah, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Hey boss, can I have the PSP?